Off to my right is a very basic graphic. The common denominator, COVID-19, the common denominator in reference to nutrient, vitamin B6. In particular, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, the biologically active form of vitamin B6, not talking pyridoxine per se, until it's converted to pyridoxal 5-phosphate. The hypothesis, you see hypertension, diabetes, as well as heart disease. Vitamin B6 plays a critical role in basically helping an individual not succumb to those particular ailments. Ailments which also are associated with succumbing to COVID-19. Now we have the hypothesis. Now before we proceed, we are not going into dosaging time of day and so on and so forth. We are just covering why vitamin B6 may play such a critical role in helping an individual not succumb to the pitfalls of this particular pandemic. And there's a little bit of selection bias in as well. Because as the researcher alludes to, or should I say illuminates, diet has played a critical role in basically determining the outcome of an individual in reference to this particular coronavirus or COVID-19. So with that in mind, let us proceed. Vitamin B6 may help keep COVID-19's cytokine storm at bay. Vitamin B6 may help cytokine storms and unclog blood clots linked to COVID-19's lethality, but research on it is lacking, quoting the researcher. Who would have thought that a small basic compound like vitamin B6 in the banana or fish you had this morning may keep your body's robust response against COVID-19? Studies have so far explored the benefits of vitamin D, C, minerals like zinc and magnesium, which we covered earlier, in fortifying immune response against COVID-19. But research on vitamin B6 has been mostly missing. Food scientists, what a wonderful complex name. Please forgive me if I don't attempt to pronounce it, for I do not want to appear disrespectful. Hopes their paper published in the Frontiers of Nutrition can be the first step in showing vitamin B6 potential in lowering the odds of the patient becoming seriously ill with coronavirus. Now, we're going to go into the hypothesis, or I should say the rationale, a reference to this hypothesis in a second, but let us proceed. In addition to washing your hands, food and nutrition are among the first lines of defense against COVID-19 virus infection. I love this quote. Food is our first medicine and kitchen is our first pharmacy, according to the researcher. Recently, many scientists have published papers regarding the role of diets and nutrients in the protection against COVID-19. However, very few scientists are paying attention to the important role of vitamin B6, she added. Now, we're going to go right into the full study itself as opposed to the press release because there's some elements of the full study which are vital to the explanation as to why vitamin B6 may play a critical role in this arena. But to proceed... Vitamin B6 is a water-soluble vitamin found in various foods, such as fish, whole grains, and banana. There are six isoforms of vitamin B6, among these pyridoxal 5-phosphate. Courtesy of Science Direct, I am going to show right here uh, basically the pathway, so to say, from pyridoxine all the way down to the biological active form of pyridoxal 5-phosphate. Now proceed. The most active form that acts as a coenzyme in various enzymatic reactions. There is growing evidence that vitamin B6 exerts a protective effect against chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease and diabetes by suppressing inflammation, inflammasomes, 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 you know, activation, so on and so forth, oxidative stress, and carbonyl stress. Additionally, vitamin B6 deficiency is associated with lower immune function and higher susceptibility to viral infections. Now, this may appear common knowledge to an individual who's a food researcher, but to the general public, you know, sometimes we have to be reminded. In view of this information, quoting, we postulate potential role of vitamin B6 in ameliorating the severity of COVID-19 and its complications. In this article, we review precedent research to test this hypothesis. This is a good size article. I am just going to give you the synopsis, or I should say the headline of each element they break down in reference to basically postulating this particular hypothesis and argument as to why. Even if vitamin B6 doesn't get incorporated into this pandemic or help ameliorating the effects of the pandemic, it is just vital to see exactly how many or how multidimensional, or how many myriads of dimensions, I should say, 
that vitamin B6 does help in keeping an individual healthy. To proceed, COVID-19 and endothelial cell inflammation. And I'm going to pause it each time. Now, keep in mind, we record in 4K. So uh, you can follow the link to the actual research itself, the full study, or you can pause it in 4K, and hopefully it's clear enough for you to see. And remember, it takes a few days, so I just if you're looking at this video as it's published, give it about 24 hours before it actually is fully uh, synchronized into 4K. Vitamin B6 and cardiovascular disease. Vitamin B6 and diabetes. Vitamin B6 and pneumonia. Vitamin B6 and immune function. Vitamin B6 and inflammasomes. Vitamin B6 in oxidative stress. That just gives you a small element of basically how vital that particular nutrient is in helping maintain an adequate response or basically as a preventive response to certain other elements which are an insult to the biology of humans. But to proceed as follows. Vitamin B6 has a close relationship with the immune system. Its levels always drop in people under chronic inflammation, such as obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Quoting, we can see from the news that obese individuals and diabetic people are at a high risk of COVID-19. Hence the common denominator, hence working as a detective in reference to a clue in finding one key, one potential key that can unlock uh, basically a strong nutrient defense against not only this pandemic, but future pandemics as follows, or anything else that's out there just daily life. All right. Thus, our attempt in this paper is to shed light on the possible involvement of B6 in decreasing the severity of COVID-19. The associated professor said she is looking forward to clinical trials that would test this hypothesis. Quoting, it is of great interest to examine if B6 exerts protection against novel types of viruses, infections, and pneumonia, which we all encounter in the future. She's realistic. At present, there is few information regarding the protective role of nutrients against pneumonia and lung disease. And I especially enjoy this conclusion. Quote, after COVID-19, we should develop the area of nutrition for lung diseases such as pneumonia and as well lung cancer. Primary reason, because one thing that has been strongly associated outside of physical health conditions, such as diabetes, heart disease, and hypertension, and so on and so forth, or any other element in reference to inflammation, is basically how incredible the correlation between nutrients and negative outcomes in reference to COVID-19. Not only that, in reference to potential disease vectors such as transmission, as we basically looked at before in reference to vitamin D. So you have the nutrients, for example, D, C, zinc, magnesium, and now to add to that arsenal, B6. If not for this particular pandemic, for anything that may be encountered in the future, for keeping individuals healthy, especially in long-term care facilities where malnutrition tends to run rampant. Instead of trying to focus on necessarily the vaccine aspect, which is ex post facto in response to a pandemic, why not build an incredible, incredible firewall of nutrient-fortified individuals who tend to be more prone, especially those in long-term care facilities, which we had to do over again. Vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, C, and now B6 as well, can basically help prevent, I should say, a good amount of suffering per as well. But again, she says the best. They gotta look at nutrient interventions. It's just as important as anything that may be chemical. But all as well too, for those not familiar, we covered part of this, Sunday morning. For those that want to join us on the data analytic aspect, as far as looking at basically a lot of the um, numbers, I should say, in reference to pandemic mitigation, what's been effective, what's not been effective, feel free to join us Sunday morning, what's it? One o'clock in the morning most often, but we are there. Again, gratitude, thank you. DUI citations will be there. Link to the information will be there as well. And as always, gratitude, and I look forward to hearing from you or talking to you or have you watch later on. As always, humbly, gratefully, and thank you. Catch you all next time. Bye.